Board meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Got me in trouble. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for joining us this evening. Please be advised in the event of a fire emergency, an alarm will sound. Please note all emergency exits and evacuate well away from the building. At this time, we request everyone please turn off your cell phones to silent and thank you for your cooperation. At this time, I will administer the oath to our elected board members. Elizabeth Dodd, please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Board Member according to the best of my ability. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Board Member according to the best of my ability. Thank you. John Bickford, please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithful, faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Board Member according to the best of my ability. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Board Member according to the best of my ability. Thank you. Sure. As the new school year begins with this meeting, board members will vote on a president. Do I have any nominations for president? Nominate Mr. Richter. Can I have a second? I would like to second. Are there any other nominations? Being that there are, are no other nominations, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Rick. Uh, Chris, uh, please stand and I will administer the oath. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of president according to the best of my ability. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of president according to the best of my ability. And now we will elect a vice president. Are there any nominations? Mrs. Elizabeth Dow. I will I second that. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Being that Liz is our only nomination, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Liz. Please stand as I will administer your oath. And raise your right hand to repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Vice President according to the best of my ability. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Vice President according to the best of my ability. At this time, Mr. Malasani, please stand for the oath of the Superintendent of Schools. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Superintendent of Schools according to the best of my ability. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Superintendent of Schools according to the best of my ability. Thank you. And now I will administer the oath of office to the district clerk, Mrs. Boosh, repeat after me. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of district clerk according to the best of my ability. 
I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of District Clerk according to the best of my ability. Thank you. Would you like all these, Mrs. Booth? John, did you sign yours? I'm sorry. Did you sign yours? Um, no, I was just getting to see where I was in outer space. I don't know where mine is. And our uh, district treasurer will be administered her own tomorrow at work. Okay, item five. Additions, deletions, and changes to the agenda. Yes, under additions, under 11-4 CSE recommendations, and under deletions, under personnel, uh, we will be removing a company stipend from that list. Okay. Can I have a motion for the consent agenda one through four, please? So moved. And a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That carries, carried, <coughs> excuse me. Communications correspondence. Yes, I, I shared with you the June 2023 middle and high school honor roll percentages for both the again, middle and high school. You can see our percentage is basically seven every 10 students are either on the honor roll or high honor roll. So our students, uh, again, perform well all year. Also in your board packets, I've given you the middle school, high school discipline reports for your review. And uh, next are points of pride. All right. Four graduating seniors earn the coveted Eagle Award. It'll be Tyler Douglas, Alden Hatch, Dave Tetrall, and Elliot Dietrich. Also, graduating senior Maddie DeVore, selected for the Democrat Chronicle all Greener Rochester softball team. She is the first Kelowna Mumford softball player selected to ADR since 2018. That's when Andrea Coyle was selected. Maddie was also selected in the New York State Class C All-State Second Team. This is her third time being an All-State selection. 20 students from grades four to eight completed a three-day tennis camp through Kilmum Community Education with coaches McQuinlan and Coach Turborg and members of the tennis team helping. During the last week of school, Mrs. Streb's CTE classes presented their marketing projects to a panel of teachers, principals, teachers and principals. The project was in collaboration with Pizza Land, and thank you to Pizza Land for working with our students and baking the pizzas that the students created. This week, students will participate in basketball, baseball, softball, and football camps here at school. Congratulations to juniors Megan Ward, Gianna McCowan, Bella Pelletier, and Brooke Van Dyne, who were selected to attend the American Legion Girls State Program. Thank you to the Matthew Cleary Post American Legion Auxiliary for sponsoring these Cal Mom students. Any other correspondence, Mr. Wellesheim? That's all. Okay, guests of the board. Um, we have with us tonight um, Jeff Robbins from Hunt Engineers, Kevin Donahue from Campus Construction, Melissa Kirkland um, from Bernie Donegan's office, and who else from campus? Joe Colano. And Joe Colano. He was first. Of course, yeah, Jeff was first. <laughs> All right, so I'll just share with you, uh, just to get it started, and, and the team will then take over. Um, let's see, here's a register. So how did we get here? Um, it will be part of the agenda. We're also going, actually, why don't we go right to the next slide? So back in 2020, we had hunt engineers and architects come in and they evaluated our campus. From there, we actually had $70 million of work that were identified, either being one, need to be repaired, replaced, or new construction, dealing with um, instructional initiatives. Uh, all, all, everything was evaluated from all of our trades, mechanical, you know, site, everything as you can imagine. 
Um, meetings have occurred in the district office since January, to be frank with you, really since January 2020, we have met right along a as a team. Uh, more so early on, it was just uh, with Jeff and um, Shannon, uh, but most recently since January with the entire team. So from there, we've got cost estimates. Uh, we have our partnership with campus. Obviously, we've been with them for nearly, gosh, 25, 26 years, even when they were in Christian construction. Uh, we identified all of our work with priorities from one to five. One being, this is a priority, it needs to be replaced or it's a structural initiative uh, to five, where it would be nice if we had the money if we could do that. So we took priorities one and two, which was again, I think nearly $30 million worth of work. We then reduced that to, you're gonna see roughly $15 million. Um, we still are at the conceptual stage, so we're still moving forward, uh, but you'll see some, some wonderful things that the team has come up with. Uh, STEM store tours. So we visited uh, Leroy, York, Mount Morris, two schools in Webster. We also had virtual tours of some um, districts that are downstate to take a look at STEAM and STEM, uh, the opportunities that both exist both in elementary and middle and high schools. Um, as I shared with you, again, these are all conceptual designs. So more detailed plans will be created after the budget is, or actually the capital project is approved in December. Uh, campus provided cost estimates for us, and uh, Bernie Donegan's office has worked with us again several years ago, dating back that we knew that this is the time in which we were going to go out for a project. And they've given us several analysis in terms of if we had 500000 to $2 million in reserves. And then if, if also we were considering a tax levy increase to fund this project, which we will not at this point. But with that, is I'll give it to Mr. Roberts. <clears throat> so I'm just going to walk you through the scope of what we've come up with and prioritized. And it's, it's laid out, um, you know, at the beginning from site work, we've done it by building. So you're seeing the elementary school here and the proposed, you know, exterior work. It's largely, you know, asphalt work. You're going to see that consistent across the, the board here. So we got the drop off loop. Um, you know, really in that area, going right down to sub base and doing a full depth replacement. There's some sidewalk replacement, granite curb replacement, and then the south parking lot. We're really looking at a mill and overlay, and there was some um, more in depth evaluation to determine how far to go in which area. So we um, consulted with a, a company that came in and did course, a full depth course through the system, and evaluate the condition of each layer. And that's how we kind of develop the level of scope here to fit within the budget and also give longevity and what we could get more life out of with minimal increase in cost. So that, that activity occurred to come up with this scope of work. Um, so that's what allowing the entrance drive in that south parking lot to be a mill and overlay because the sub base is still in good shape. You got me, thank you. Yeah. And then inside the elementary school, we have um, you know, some high level items that, you know, big scope items, there's some other miscellaneous things that are happening, but these kind of encompass most of the work. There's some roof replacement, and that's, that's key also to, to keep the life of the building going. There's certain areas that, it's really in the 38 wing, I believe, yes. is the part that needs to be replaced. Um, the STEM slash library renovations, so this is a, an educational initiative, as, as um, Bob spoke to about touring different STEM suites and, and whatnot, is combining that activity with the library and um, refreshing the library activity and the media center and then having a joining STEM space that's designed for collaboration and bringing other teachers and their classes together into some specialized education. So this is showing really the areas of the building that be renovated. You're not seeing the, the new design, if you will, because it's in the conceptual phase. We have done some of that. We didn't really want to show it too early because it, we know it's going to change as it gets developed. But it's that area of the building that would undergo renovations. The plan is um, off to the right there. And then uh, another major initiative is a secure entrance and main office and associated nurses suite renovation. And again, always improve security of your facilities. 
Um, part of the challenge here is that stairway comes right down to that entrance and really, you know, securing that away from people coming into the building and being let in. So there's a, we've done some des multiple designs to kind of uh, look at different options we can have, but we can definitely secure that and separate that stairway. So that part, of it, again, that doesn't show the new design, but that's the area that the building would be renovated under that initiative. And then there's window replacement, and that's really the west facade facing the, the front of the building is those windows are, are really getting in poor shape and are time to be replaced. So we'll be going through and replacing all those windows into a similar looking fashion. We've reached out to the Historic Commission of the state, and <coughs> being that they've already been replaced, we have some flexibility on what to do there, but we want to keep it, you know, looking, um, you know, as, as historic and, and good and also functional as possible. So we'll go through some design elements of that as we get further down, but in the budget is to replace those windows on that facade. Is that upgraded security precautions on those windows too when they go in? Not necessarily, but it could be a conversation point. Is it and first that, floor or second floor windows? It's both. both. Just remember the elementary building first floor windows are pretty high. Yep. Probably five foot off the ground. So that, yeah, that's, it's not a huge cost increase, but there is some consideration for uh, first responders and, and different aspects that we always yep. like to discuss before we plow forward with that item. Should I ask questions now or wait till the end? I'm good as we're going through. Yeah. Am, am I going to see three different elementary school, middle school, and high school presentations? Yes. All right, well, then well, high school, middle school are together. Okay, well, just quickly, um, what, what part of the, the roof possibly needs to be worked on that wasn't just worked on four years ago? The, Yes. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, go it's, ahead. it's the 1938 vintage, so the original building, the front. which is the wing that runs parallel with North Street, and then it comes back on the auditorium. We, we didn't do that? No, so in 2014, um, we hired a consultant to do a whole district-wide roof analysis, and each project we picked off at the next priority. So the 1938 wing okay. is the next one on the list. That's not my... Yeah, to so March. We, we did the 57 and the auditorium and the gymnasium last yeah, I guess. I guess to John's point, good question. When was the last time the 38 roof was touched? In 98, I believe. Okay. And it's out of warranty. But yeah. is it what... Being 26 years old, is it in it, poor shape? It's got major failures. It's the worst one in the district. Right okay, that, that's all fine. We did scans and so forth. Okay. It's been scans, yeah. It needs a full replacement. It's literally has the most failures. Uh, that's I'll go ahead. That's, that's fine. Yeah. And then uh, the I assume I'm going to see the word boiler again. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and going through the list still here, uh, we got the auditorium upgrades is some ceiling and house lighting there. That'll help with acoustics in there also. And then the boiler replacement at this building. There's three boilers there that would be um, fully replaced. Okay. And then um, over to the, that's it for the elementary school. And then we go over to the middle high school. Uh, again, you know, you can see the, the shaded area in blue where we'd be doing, um, you know, pavement work. So it's really the, the drop off area. And most of that would be, again, a mill and overlay. Um, and then there's some miscellaneous, some of the storm structures need some work and upgrades there. And again, all these were tested in court. Um, like the decisions with the roof, you know, we didn't, we didn't take that lightly. A lot of these decisions were based on um, really in-depth investigations to see what was possible. The boilers being part of that too is really evaluating, you know, the life and, and what we could get out of it versus when it needed to be replaced. So the, the building work here again is a secure entrance and um, you know right now you have to come through the vestibule in order to get into the building and, and by that point you can really go throughout. So the idea here is we would be dividing up that vestibule and creating a secure um, area to hold people until they're either let into the office or they're excused back out of the building. So that area there would be um, within the renovation area. Now here we have boiler upgrades. We're not, um, we don't have budget to replace um, the boilers completely, 
where they're the same vintage or same uh, model as what's at the elementary school and there's been some work on them to keep them operational and we'll have spare parts to, to gain another five years out of those boilers. So the idea is that for this building, we'll be able to keep the boilers going for the, until the next project. Which is when? We're, we're projecting another five years out, right? Right. Yeah. And the broken, everything that's broken over there, as far as the boilers go, you, you're gonna, you think you're gonna have parts that are functional? Yeah. Actually, everything will be fixed over there, hopefully by the end of August. So and then whatever transpires over the next two years requires additional fixtures, we will do so. If not, they, sh they should be fully functioning as we bring them over there to here for a backup. Over here they'll be fixed or they'll be replaced? Project-wise, Project -wise, they will be replaced. This summer they will be fixed. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Right. So we'll, you. we'll show the timeline, but we're two years out for construction. No, we're, we're, we're all good. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I didn't know that uh, the boiler picture was quite as rosy as it now seems. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, so then um, we have the PA system replacement and here we have some roof replacement as budget allows. There's, there's some in the, in the scope of the project there's some roof uh, work but not necessarily full areas of the building being replaced. It's really some work to increase longevity and, and fix some problem areas. But if budget allows, there is, again, as, as Kevin mentioned, parts of the building that are prioritized that we would hit next. But the goal here is to get another five years out of most of this roof and just fix the problem areas. It's not as, the roofing there isn't as bad a shape as the elementary school. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, as we go through, again, more in the building there, we have the auditorium, uh, some upgrades to ceiling, uh, seating and lighting and sound. So the sound system is going to be upgraded there. Um, then we have again the steam and the library slash media center upgrades. And as we got into that, you know, conceptual design, it made sense to incorporate some work into the wood shop area and have a maker space that was more accessible to the whole staff. So right now, there's part of that um, wood, I would call it the wood shop area. The shop area would be um, separated and rearranged so that um, that program could utilize the equipment, but it was also there'd be equipment like um, you know, 3D printers and laser engravers and things that would be accessible to the rest of the staff. So that kind of excited about what that does programmatically for your, for your building and expands out of those opportunities. How do you determine that the seating in the auditorium needs to be upgraded? I think what we have in this is really about accessibility and seating, right? Is that, do you remember that right? Yes, and it's not fully defined. It's to basically do a cosmetic upgrade in that space. Is there going to be any less chairs, seats? There might be a couple, not, not drastically, just to make the ADA work. Right. But more accessible. Yeah. So, yes. So, one of the things that we're looking at is the sound room. So, when you first come in the auditorium right to your left, there's, it's all wide open. So, we may take up three quarters of the back row to extend that to make the handicap accessible for anybody that might be using it, as well as look at new seating. I imagine this seating today is larger than what we purchased back in 98. Uh, I would imagine it's probably going to be a minimum 14 or 16 inch seat <laughs> compared to the 12 or 14 that it is now. Yeah, and you do so have I would imagine we will yeah. lose a few seats. I, I just didn't see anything wrong with the seats that were there. That's why I was wondering. That's fine. Point yep. taken. Thank you. Yep. And then, uh, so this time, and then the loading dock freight elevator is in, in really rough shape. <laughs> it needs to be done. It's not working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keeps making it on the proposals, and it doesn't seem to carry to the end. Yeah, <laughs> we've had that conversation. We've spliced it a few times. Um, this is a short slide, but I do want to just remind the group of the estimating process. So our estimating department has been uh, deployed on this project since the start of the meetings back in January. Um, and what we do is estimate in a concept form, as Mr. Malsani and Jeff have mentioned. The design is in concept. So therefore, so are our estimates. Where things are quantifiable, 
like roofing square footage, uh, things of that nature, we can get pretty detailed and pretty refined. But in other areas, we're doing it based on a unit price. So where you talk about the secure vestibules and the entrance and office renovations, those are going to be based on unit price, where we can't totally quantify every material. So we are using historical uh, uh, time-tested unit pricing, and we're constantly updating our database so it's live. In addition to that, we're putting an escalator on the numbers, because uh, Joe's going to talk to the schedule, but. Uh, providing this project was voted by the end of this year, it doesn't mean the project will be bid until the, uh, early 2025. So we take our current market pricing and we escalate it to protect the budget in the future when the project will be bought. And then there's some design contingencies and uh, construction contingencies, again, just to protect the budget. So all that summarized at the elementary building, um, it's an investment of uh, almost 6.5 million. Middle high schools, 7.8, and then the cap on DASNY, that's, that's your financing fees to um, help uh, fund the project through the course of construction and then through your borrowings. So it comes to a collective total of 15,230,000. All right, so the full voter referendum based on that scope of work would be that $15,230,000. So based on the scope that was just discussed, we took that information and applied that. I know it's pretty small if there's a lot of numbers, uh, but what's up on the screen right now are the district's maximum cost allowances for each of the school buildings. Um, so we took those costs, kind of applied those to those cost allowances that are provided by the state um, and the current cost index factors and so forth there. And so the, the cost as shown under the construction portion within the building, as well as site work outside the building, paving and parking lots and so forth, and any other incidental costs, contractual costs, soft costs, what we call, um, essentially would kind of fall under the bottom section there of this page. So all of the costs as shown and as described kind of currently fit within the district's cost allowances. So that's a good good thing there for aidability purposes and um, allows for the most aid to be received back from the state. Any questions on this form? Just quickly, what, what, could you please define the cost allowance? How do you come up with, just pretty briefly, I mean. Sure, so the state puts out based on student, very historic student population and student enrollment, there's building aid units for up to any particular building there. So the building aid units that are currently set for the district for either of the buildings, um, you take that factor, to, I mean, multiply that towards the um, con current construction cost index, the, cur the current construction values, and then there's a regional cost factor for construction work being done within your specific county. All right, so then the, the total $15 million thing that, that, that's up there, mm -hmm. that, that fits into a, the number was probably 17 or 18 and you're saying we fit into the right so if you look at if you want to look at some of the details on there so we have two different columns one for each building there so for column a the full cost allowance the top yellow number you know if you have a, there you go. Um, so it was 27 million just over 27 million dollars for actual construction at the junior senior high school building um, there's some other projects capital outlay and so forth there that have kind of be, being deducted off of that total there, and then the four and a half million dollars of construction in the building I understand kind of fits now. in there. So there's still room Thank you. You know, left for other projects, but essentially any costs stay mm -hmm. on that for five years. There's a five year reset right. from each project. Right, from the date of SCD approval, it stays as a deduct against that full allowance for the five years. Okay, I, I, I get it, thank so you for the the we actually have a lot of, as far as that cap goes, not talking about taxes yet, we have a lot of room. Yes. Right. That's yeah. is the, is the gist good, of that's the easy. Very good aid ceilings there for the buildings, right? Just be able to do the work there. So that's step one, making sure, you know, and kind of evaluating the cost as shown there and taking a look at, you know, maximizing any building aid to be received back for this project from the state. So um, moving on from there to the next page, um, taking a look at, um, current overall local share levels versus projections for this pr proposed project for the $15.2 million authorization. So we have here in blue 
on the left hand side there. Um, so there is the current estimated building local share um, tax levy dollars um, currently in the budget around $50,000 a year on an annual basis coming up in the 25-26 fiscal year one of the older capital projects will be paid off and will be kind of coming off of that local share and so it allows for an opportunity to kind of fit in new debt service um, you know to maintain the existing level of local share there so essentially that's what we're kind of utilizing in conjunction with um, the district's capital reserve we're assuming um, contributing $2,750,000 from the capital reserve to apply towards this project to kind of downsize the borrowing for that initially there. So kind of take the blue existing portion, existing what you're currently paying based on prior projects and so forth there, um, you kind of layer in in columns B through G um, the proposed principal payment payback there for the remaining portion not covered by the capital reserve dollars. We have an estimate in there for um, possible interest expense for that borrowing for um, the permanent financing um, projections for the state building needs. So you have a net local share is what we call it, the debt service principal and interest less any building need to be received back from the state. Um, so you have a local share for this project um, that fits in nicely there that has about that $50,000 um, round number kind of local share that'll in column H on the very right hand side um, you can see that kind of layering in together to produce essentially a no additional tax impact project so on a, on a standalone basis there you know there's a little bit of a impact but then when you blend it with what the district's currently paying that everything stays very level and within the current local share any questions on that um, and then the next slide here just shows visually the local share column there. So that um, horizontal line there kind of running across the page shows you where you currently are um, so that there's no additional tax impact for the project when it's blended with your existing debt service and local share levels there. So we're kind of projecting to maintain that existing local share through at this point through 2032. Um, then by the time potentially we get to 2033, there might be an opportunity for another project to kind of fit in the same way where some, you have some, another debt service drop off at that point. So five year timing for um, the next project, you know, kind of keeping up with building condition survey and so forth. There. So, any questions on that? Thank you, Melissa. All right, the last thing we're here to talk about tonight is the actual schedule for the project, so when we're actually gonna do the work that we've just previously talked about. Uh, if we're looking at the graphic on the screen, uh, it's at the bottom, so I'm gonna be a little difficult for some of you to see, but we started on the left hand most side. Uh, we're right in the middle, currently tonight, of those two lines. Uh, as Bob mentioned at the beginning of the project, or presentation tonight, we started with about $30 million worth of work, and over monthly meetings since January, have whittled that down to the $15 million number that we talked about tonight. Uh, moving from now until the vote in December, there's a couple actions that the board will need to take and then our groups will need to take uh, in conjunction with that. This meeting, we're talking about the scope. Uh, at the August 8th meeting, we're gonna come back to the board and ask for full confirmation of everything that we've talked about tonight that you all agree that that is what we're looking to do with the capital project. At the October 10th meeting, we're gonna adopt the seeker, which is the environmental uh, resolution, and then the actual referendum for the vote in December. Throughout October through December, our firms are going to be hosting a public info campaign in conjunction with the district to get your public on board with the capital project we presented. And then in November and December, just prior to the vote, we'll hold public presentations for the public to come and ask questions and more or less get this exact same presentation given to them. And then finally in December, with a date to be determined as of tonight, will be the actual referendum vote. So from there, uh, this is the timeline that's blown up. The top two lines are the uh, bars we just looked at. Once the vote passes, uh, Hunt will design the actual project. <laughs> As we've talked about a few times, we're just in conceptual now, so this is when Hunt will fully go through and design everything out. And along the way, campus will provide further cost estimates to a more detailed degree than what Kevin talked about earlier. From there, the project gets submitted to the state, which is yeah, in blue, and I cannot read the months off the top of my head, but it will be the second half of 2024. The state reviews the project and ultimately gives their approval. This process 
historically takes five to six months. From there, we'll bid the project at the end of 24 into 2025, which is the purple line. To your knowledge, are they back on schedule at five to six months? Right now, that's what they're trending. But, right. and you definitely can answer this too. We've just been a part of submitting a half a dozen projects, and um, we're going we're gonna to gain more information. Right. Sure. That so was a they, huge concern with the last project it, in timing. The state's gone up and down, there's been peaks and valleys. Um, unfortunately, at least in my opinion, this spring they dropped the third party review option. So oh. we're hoping that doesn't have a negative. So there's impact. no expedited review anymore. There's no expedited review as of right now. So, um, but they are trending. We've been getting projects back in five or six months. So, okay. that's what we're so they have restaffed. They're constantly looking for staff. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> they're trying to restaff. <laughs> They, they, you know, they come out and say that they're fully staffed, and then two weeks later, you hear two people leave. Yeah. And I, it's like what everybody's dealing with. So they're um, still looking for staff. They're, they're, it, it's an ever-changing timeline. You know, right now, they, their timelines have increased about two to four weeks from what they were four months ago. So in this district we've experienced in the last decade up to 12 months review 13 months review and as little as three or four so well can i guess it's on hunt to move as quickly as they can in the design phase we've let it go that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it counts i mean it, it's a real conversation it's worth having because this schedule is all is already expedited we're, we're taking six months to do design work that we usually take a year frankly, to do that. And part of that is going through a regimented process to design, have it estimated, and, and double check to make sure we're on target. You know, squeezing that down, it can be done, but we're, we're doing that in this schedule. Normally, you it would be another six, eight months out from what this is, right? Which isn't great, because you're dealing with the middle of summer or the next year, you lose a year. So, what we can do, though, is um, as we move along, if we can start some of this design work early, we can maybe get a head start on some of it. And you know, a lot of it is pretty straightforward stuff. There's the roofing and the boilers, and the, the biggest thing that takes time, though, are those design elements. And we can say that you know we've already started that process. We've met with some of your staff. We didn't show you those designs, but we've done the first round of design. And if it's something you want to expedite, we could begin that process in September, October, and get a couple months early start. Um, there's a little bit of risk of yeah. design time. I'll talk to them about yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. John. All right, one, one last question. Um, even if you had the, even if you, even if you had the vote on Christmas Eve, <laughs> I'm just using it as an example. Um, I, I'm terrible with names. The, the young lady was just explaining the, the payment stuff. Melissa. Melissa, I'm sorry. Um, it's like having a $400 payment on a truck, trading the truck in for a new one, and still having the same $400 payment. So this is what this 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 whole thing is not going to cost anybody any more than we're currently paying. Correct. That's, that's perfect. perfect. That, that's so. Yeah. Have it on Christmas Eve then. <laughs> <You're outside. laughs> that's what I thought, but I mean, it's a, it's a no brainer. Right. Yeah. And that's always the goal to keep it smooth. Well, when you mentioned started out with roofs and stuff, I was just, you know, we're all good. No, thank you. Right. So, just to quickly wrap this up, once we get approved from the state, we put it out, the project out to bid, so we publicly bid it. That's where Kevin was talking about our escalation factor. That's early 2025 or middle of 2023 it's a while from now once the contracts are awarded we begin construction and we're anticipating a two summer worth of construction for the scope that we outlined so that puts us at the end of 2026 with completing the project and final cost reports in december of 26. Gotcha. thank you i have a couple leading questions one of which mr bigford already covered it is a zero dollar zero percent tax impact as conceptualized right now. So from that standpoint, it's a very conservative project. When you look at uh, what you presented to us as far as our allowances, um, we're still looking conservative. Would, would you guys agree that that's a fair statement? <laughs> yeah, 
at least. I would so, say yes. <laughs> so you're within your current cost allowances, right? So that's one. That's just within. We are. One. We're not. We're not putting ourselves at any future risk of oh crap. You've left room in the budget. To yeah. chase more right, so there's the room at yes. each the you know inside the building. So the top portion of that page there is for construction inside mm -hmm. any of those buildings, and then the section down below is for any site work related to parking okay. lots and so forth. So like there is room still a lot after this project is applied. More on the building side than the site side. Right. right. There's a lot of site work into um, planned for this current project, which will uh, tap into the incidental side pretty heavy. Okay. And, there was, and that's where the five-year reset kicks in. So, yeah, we have been doing a lot of stuff. Without a tax impact, I mean, it'll be five years before you do a major investment outside again. Okay. So, what Jeremy kind of has zoomed in right there, the one, the one building there for the elementary school down towards the um, incidental and site work section there towards the bottom, yeah. with the costs for this project as applied, um, it leaves about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars left in that eight ceiling. So that one is a little bit closer. Um, to availability there, but we are maximizing to the fullest extent in order to produce a project with the district contribution there to have a no additional tax impact project there with the pool. Okay, and then I guess mostly Jeff and Kevin, you guys have been doing these projects very recently in a lot of districts and throughout both of your whole careers. 15 million really is, since in the grand scheme of things, a large project. For a capital improvement project. The price of construction has continued to escalate. So yeah, um, it's a pretty fair statement that fifteen million in today's dollars doesn't buy you what it would have five years ago. But it's you have. I mean, I think there's a pretty healthy scope there. There's a very healthy scope. What I like also. about this too, to, if just an opinion, is that this project uh, impacts a lot of your learning spaces yes. and your security. So it's two pretty marketable components that are good for our district. Yeah. Kevin, can you remind me what percentage we set aside for incidentals? It's twenty yeah, percent. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. That's so, has stayed the same. That's the same, and we've run a couple of uh, worksheets to test that out. So, and that's um, that should be uh, more than enough to deliver okay. the project. Thank you. Any questions? I feel like they have another one, but, you know, We'll have another it. opportunity. No, it's more of a compliment, I guess, that, you know, to, to say it's only 15 million doesn't get us as much. The partnership between Hunt and Campus and Donegan and our district and our school board has been long standing, and, and we've kept up on this campus. Not to you. Great. No. Um, so, yeah, you only went over after half of the ones and twos, but of the ones and twos that are still on the table, not not having the full building condition survey in front of me, we're not. There's nothing that's saying, oh, oh no, we're going to be in trouble. No, no. We'll see how the roofs act in the next couple of years, but uh, they are a lot of money. And like I said, we did prioritize the elementary roof, the 38 wing, over some potential older roofs that are ballasted over here. Uh, everybody knows we want to erase bitumen roof roof set and. Uh, it's really served the district well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Very thorough. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations on the appointment, still. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your night, guys. Thank you for coming. Crank up the AC in your cars. I've been in my car all day. Good to see you. Okay. Um, we have nobody signed up for public forum. So moving on to item eight, reorganizational appointments. Number one, officers and appointments. Resolve that the Board of Education appoint the following officers for one year effective immediately. As listed, items A through double H, there are only three changes from last year. Um, those changes are item K, uh, AHERA, LEA designee, our chemical hygiene appointment, uh, person, person appointment, and the dignity for all coordinator for the elementary school. Can I have a motion for A through double H? Yes. And a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. 
Reorganizational appointment number two, designations. Resolve that the Board of Education make the designations for one year effective immediately. As listed, A through H, with only two changes from last year, G, health instruction coordinator, and H, school pesticide representative. May I have a motion for A through H, please? So moved. And a second. I'll make it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Number three, authorizations. Resolved that the Board of Education endorse the authorizations listed for one year effective immediately. As listed, items A through M with no changes from last year. A motion please for A through M. I'll make it. And a second. A second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Item four, impartial hearing officer, resolved that the Board of Education, pursuant to the authority in 8 NYCRR section 200.5, the president of the Board of Education is hereby designated to make the appointment of the impartial hearing officer for any due process special education administrative case filed against or by the district in the absence or unavailability of the board president, the vice president shall make the appointment. A motion, please. I'll make it. And a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Number five, approval of cooperative bidding. Result that the Board of Education appoint Jeremy Nardone as business administrator to participate in cooperative bidding for the 2023-2024 year effective July 1st, 2023. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Give me a moment because this might be. <laughs> Okay, number six, board committees. Resolved that the Board of Education appoint representatives to the committees for the 2023-2024 school year as follows. This is A through N. Is there, uh, before we get into each of us individually, there's been some questions about um, how much time we each have and, um, and our own personal schedules. We all do recognize that we are all volunteer board members. We recognize that we all have kids, grandkids, families. We recognize that we all have um, our own careers, our own jobs. And, and the expectation is that you just do the best you can, um, especially if, if we do know that there is um, something that's coming up in those meetings. So um, anybody that was feeling like, you know, I missed, I missed some of my uh, meetings, there were committee assignments. I don't think you have to worry about it. Um, there was nothing that I'm aware of that was um, an issue by anybody that missed a, a committee meeting. So um, with that said, um, is there anybody that wants to change, that wants to be added to a committee or wants to be removed from a committee? If you have in your, your, uh, your backup notes last year's committee assignments. Okay. So we will go through them, but as we go through them right now, is there anybody that knows of a change that's going to be coming? I'd be happy to join the technology if, okay. if needed, but otherwise, whatever. All right, so elementary school compact committee, still you, Mr. Bellinet? Yes, please. Thank you. Middle high school compact, it's um, Jamie Fitch and Liz Dietrich, and Jamie did respond to our text, whatever the team needs. So we will keep Jamie there. Technology committee, um, Liz Dahl, and if I will remove myself. And if, the, if you want to stay, if you're okay. <laughs> and, and have Mrs. Dietrich go on. Twist your arm. I would like to be removed. I will stay on with Mrs. Dietrich. Do we do we need two for we each? We don't need two, but okay. How often stay. does that meet? Uh, curiosity, will um, I sign met, you up for? It, 
We met three meeting. to four times, but half of them were canceled. And I made. Yeah. There'll be more regular scheduled meetings this year. Okay. So I have Liz and me still. Liz and okay. Chris. So Liz, that got very. And when I got on it, I mean, that's the committee that generated one to one devices. So you know, when I joined on it in the first place, it, it was I was there. You know, I was a big part of that. When you're struggling to figure out, you know, what's my role as a board member? What do I do to make a difference? Sometimes it's in the committees, and some sometimes the committee has a has a bigger bigger load to carry certain years than others. So. Um, you know, we're on a very good technology plan right now, so. Um, Genesee Valley Partnership Board Rep and Alternative. Um, that's been me and the Vice President. Mm -hmm. so we're still the same. Legislative liaison, liaison, Mr. Fitch. I know Arnie's come to every one of those. Uh, Breakfasts? Yeah. So you can put me on instead of Jamie. You can both be on. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, add me on. Well, thank you for continuing to do that, whether you're on the committee or not. For sure. <laughs> uh, negotiations, Jamie Fitch and Liz Dahl. Did, was anybody aware if we had a third? No, we haven't had a third. Do we have any contracts coming up this year? No. Okay. So we'll leave that alone. So it's Fitch and Dahl? Yep. Okay. Uh, board Audit Committee, Mr. Belenek, Mr. Bickford, and Mr. Richter. Any changes? Excellent. Facilities Committee, Mr. Belenick, Mrs. Dahl, and Mr. Rich Lickey. I know uh, Mike also served in that capacity. Yes, he's on yeah. that was the change that okay. Jamie caught on that. That's why, that's why you weren't listed originally. Yeah. Jamie caught the change where the year got made by me. So that committee will meet uh, several times over the next uh, two years. And then it'll probably be a little bit of lull until we do our next five year Building condition survey, but I don't think over the next two years we'll have you know two or three meetings a year. Is anybody else interested in being on that? I would like to step off of that committee. Jamie? Oh, oh it's, Jamie would put it's the middle of the day. Well, I, it's so hard yeah. for me to do those. Um, why don't we uh, put on there to ask Mr. Fitz if he wants to do it? Okay. Otherwise, we'll stick with the two. So, Melanick and Arnie. Richard, you okay? And Fitz, if you would like to. Okay. Board Policy Committee, Arnie Rislicki and Liz Dietrich. And did you do that too, Liz? She did. She did. H historically. A couple of years ago with you. Yeah. Oh, but not this past year. No. Okay. okay. You guys still good with that? Thank you. Shared Services Committee, Arnie Rislicki, Liz Dahl, and Jamie Fitch. I would like to stay on. Arnie still good? Yep. Excellent. Athletic Code Committee, Liz Dahl, Mike Belenick, and Liz Dietrich. I would like to step off. I but would be willing to. I, I wasn't invited to any of the last I ones. I think Jamie. It was, it was Jamie. So that was. Okay, so let's say it's I Jamie could, Fitch. I could take it or leave it. If you need, if you need somebody, sign me up. But. You want off, Liz? Dahl, Mrs. Dahl? Yes, What's please. Okay. If, if possible, if not, I'll stay on. Um, Jamie attended those. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So now stay on. Okay. There you go. Dietrich. Yeah. Dietrich Fitch. 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 Okay. Genesee Valley Board President Representative is myself, backed up by Mrs. Dahl. Financial Planning is our new committee from last year. Uh, Jamie Fitch, Liz Dietrich, and myself. A textbook committee is Liz Dietrich and Mr. Bickford. That was also a new committee last year. All right, everybody's okay with that? Yep. Excellent. Moving to week. Oh, resolved that the Board of Education accepts these appointments as we just went through. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second? A second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Number seven, building use fees. Resolved to the Board of Education per board policy number 3280. Establish building use fees at $29.30 per hour for the 2023-2024 school year. Motion please. I'll make it. And a second. Sure. Any discussion? That's only if we don't already have 
staff present, right? That's correct. We have to call in additional staff because the outside agency is using it. That's correct. Otherwise, our buildings are open to public yeah. use. Yes, 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 it okay. is. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Substitute rates. I should probably read them. Right. You can. Yeah. Result of the Board of Education established the following rates for substitutes during the 2023-2024 school year. Certified sub of $150 per day and $165 after 40 days. Uncertified sub of $115 per day, $125 after 40 days. Substitute nurse at $150 per day. Substitute secretary at $120 per day and $130 after 40 days. Part-time clerk at $18 per hour. And other substitute staff um, as laid out in the attachment. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Committee on Special Education resolved that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approved the recommended membership to the Committee on Special Occasion for the 2023-2024 school year. There are no changes to those people. A motion, please. Yep. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Well, not necessarily a change, but we will actually be adding a parent rep that will be coming to your next meeting in either August or September. To serve on the committee. To serve on the committee. That's correct. Oh, that's okay. In addition to the parent of the child. Yep. Are, there, are there board members on that? No. Oh. No. Never. Typically are not either. Well, I think we can't be. Because these are these are generally the hearing these are the hearings that happen to determine what what services what yeah, services it's are a meeting of, yes how they how they serve the superintendent so I'm not a part of those meetings I think I asked this ten years ago but the the, the parent rep has to have a, a, a child in special ed is that correct I would say I'm not sure about has to but it's typically been the case all right thank you okay all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. And then number 10, the subcommittee on special education resolved that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent approve the recommended membership to the subcommittee on special education for the 2023-2024 school year. As listed with no changes and at the discretion of the parent or the agency, other individuals who have knowledge or special expertise regarding the child, including related services personnel as appropriate, such as a speech and language pathologist, <coughs> occupational therapist, or physical therapist. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second. Second. Any discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Committee on Preschool Special Education resolved that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent Approve the recommended membership to the Committee on Preschool Special Education for the 2023-2024 school year. As listed, um, Megan Rogers, of course, is the chairperson, and then the other members of that committee are um, appointed as needed based on the county, and also there will be a parent representative on that committee as well um, to be determined. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second? Yep. Any discussion? Is that parent representative going to be the same as the... Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Number 12, establish the standard work day for ERS. Resolved that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent hereby establishes as standard work days for its employees and will report days work to the New York State and local employees retirement system based on timekeeping system or the record of activities maintained and submitted by these members to the clerk of this body. Motion please. I'll make it. And a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. 
Number 13, authorization to hire employees pending board approval. Whereas the appointment of employees and the approval of volunteers is within the authority of this board, and whereas employee appointments and volunteer approvals generally begin after the date of board action, and whereas there are circumstances in which it is advantageous and proper that employees and volunteers begin prior to the date of board action. Now therefore be it resolved, this board delegates to the superintendent the authority to appoint employees and to approve volunteers effective on a date prior to board action. I should reread that, I missed an important line. Now therefore be it resolved that the board delegates to the superintendent or designee the authority to appoint employees and to approve volunteers effective on a date prior to board action, provided, however, that such employees and volunteers are placed on the board agenda for the next following board meeting. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second? Second. Any discussion? Bob, do we do this every year? Yes. Yeah, but we really try hard to not do, use this. Yes. Okay. We probably started this five or six years ago when we certainly went to uh, one meeting a month. Okay. But, uh, it's Rarely does it happen, but it has. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yep. I'm sorry, I had Bounty. Can you second that? Uh, Liz Dell. Okay. Thank oh, you. I don't know. I had Liz D. I guess there's two Liz D's. Liz Dietrich. Dietrich, thank you. I can't change my short name. Um, any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Number 14, authorization for business matters in between board meetings. Authorize the superintendent or designee to approve and sign routine and or time sensitive contracts that require action between board meetings. Motion please. I'll make it. And a second. Yep. Any discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Authorization for other business office functions in between board meetings. Authorize the superintendent or designee to certify payrolls, make transfers of money between and within functional unit appropriations, to approve conferences for all employees and to approve applications for grants. Motion please. I'll make it. And a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. We have no old business to discuss. Item 10, new business. Number one, Asbestos Hazard Emergency Response Act Periodic Surveillance Review. Yes, I just shared with you in your board back at uh, every six months we have a review done. Uh, Ms. Lunger uh, actually conducts that for our school district. As, uh, she has not identified any areas of need of uh, immediate uh, repair. Um, and you have a report before you. Okay, thank you. Any questions on that report from the board? Okay, new business item two, resolution to approve breakfast and lunch prices. Resolved that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent approve the school breakfast and lunch prices for the 2023-2024 school year as follows. Breakfast is $1.90 for K-5 and $1.90 for 6 through 12. Lunch is $2.85 for K-5 and $2.95 for 6 12. 6 through 12th grade. Motion please. I'll make it. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Yes, I just want to make sure you guys are all well heard. So as I shared in the backup notes, we thought that we would lose between ten dollars to $25,000. We did finalize that today. Uh, we lost eleven thousand dollars but if you think about what i what i shared with you last summer we thought we were between sixty to seventy thousand dollars in loss in reality we were right on track uh, we did receive fifty two thousand dollars of supply chain assistant grant money so we had fifty two and eleven sixty three thousand dollars so we do anticipate even with this increase in prices if our district does not receive free lunches and breakfast for the entire uh, student body that our lunch program would lose between sixty to seventy thousand dollars next year as well. Where are we with the free and uh, complete free? We're, we are trying hard. We are trying hard uh, to get that passed. We think that'll be a mid-August type of approval. Okay. And I optimistic. 
So we, Catalonia was not on the list of a district receiving it. However, when you go back and you look at our numbers, we do qualify. So we've already reached out several times to the state. Um, I hope that we would get it. All right, good. Yeah, I think you. your deep breath before answering says well. Well, it's and important that, that we get it. <laughs> yeah. And also, we are so close to that numbers. Like we may have it this year, or next year, not have it, or a year from now, have it in the elementary, but not have it in high school. We're very, very close. But we do currently qualify. So we will fight to see that we get it. Do you have a question, please? No, okay. I did. I don't anymore. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carry. Number three, review of annual average daily attendance. Per our board policy number 7110, the district's annual daily attendance for the 2022-2023 school year was 94.17%. Yeah, so that, that's the overall, and last year, it's a 21-22 school year, we were at 95%, uh, so a little bit of dip there. As I shared with you, with the far right-hand column too, you can see next year we'll actually have K-5 and then 6-12 attendance. So I gave you a shaded area because we no longer have the middle school, it's middle and high school, so that's how we'll be reporting from this day out. I gave you that number. Middle high school attendance was at 94.44%. Okay, thank you. Number four, setting the 2023-2024 tax levy. Resolved that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, set the tax levy for the 2023-2024 annual school budget at $7,718,926. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second. A second. Any discussion? It's not really, just to just point out, the taxes uh, are projected to go up 1.9%, which is equivalent to $143,925 additional contribution from our community. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Number five, award of a bid for the heat exchangers. Resolved that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, award a bid for two heat exchangers that will be replaced in two separate boilers to the lowest responsible bidder, which was LMC Industrial Contractors. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Number six, middle school, middle high school student performance report. You have it there, Jeremy. Thank you. So it's still pretty early in the season for doing some of our data comparisons. Uh, but just in general, uh, I will do the basic overview that I typically do with you all for the regents exams that I pay the most close attention to. Not that they don't all matter, uh, but certainly we care very much about the four that are required for graduation. I like to make sure that I draw our attention to those. So since COVID, um, the New York State Department of Education has lowered the passing rate. They basically, I, I shouldn't say they lowered the passing rate. They're allowing for exemptions for students that score between the 50 and the 64 to actually go through an exemption process where they have to pass the course, the teacher of record actually has to say that the, they, the teacher feels that the child met the standard, so like there's, a, there's an appeals process that we have to go through with the state. Uh, we are still lucky to have that in play. Uh, I'll be glad next year to tell you that it no longer exists and we didn't need it. Um, but you will see in the data overall when you're looking at the overall region's exam results um, I've given you the breakdown of our passing rates um, both ways. So when you're looking at Algebra 1, that's that first math exam that matters uh, the most, our freshman class, in terms of getting themselves ready for graduation. Without the low pass option, we were at a 90% overall passing rate for that freshman, freshman class, and of course that includes our accelerated, yes. Just for board members that are trying to look for it, it is on the uh, Agenda Backup 7.11.23 PDF. So it's all the way to the, fur the furthest right tab, yep. and it's the last item on that list. Hold on. What page? The last, last. If you click in the, on the left bookmarks, you'll get exam results. Thank you, Chris. Yep. 
perfect. Yeah, I try not to read them too, so I'm glad you, you do see them. So uh, Algebra 1 is that first, first math exam that we pay attention to. We like to see our freshman uh, class on track for graduation right out of the gate with both credit accrual for the course and picking up that Regents exam. With the 50, uh, with the exemptions, you'll see that overall uh, we had seven kids fail the Algebra 1 exam. Five of those seven did qualify for the appeal. So our passing rate, if we were just to count the, the failures, we're at 90% passing rate. Once we pick up the kids that qualified for the appeal, we are at 97. So as a school district, just so you know, when we have two kids that did not earn the course credit, what we typically do here is we will either put the student right back in the class in the next semester or we assign them summer school in the summertime if that is uh, something that their family is able to do. We like to get that credit and get that exam under their belt as quickly as possible. So that is Algebra 1. Our mastery rate, I would tell you, is a little bit low. Um, I don't see mastery rates yet for the entire region. Regional results are not out, but we as high school principals have created our own sort of data set. There is a district a, a down the way that shall remain nameless uh, that I pay close attention to in terms of they're a similar school to us in size. So their percent passing, our percent passing, it's like we're looking in the mirror. Uh, we chase after them just a little bit. Don't, that's why they shall remain nameless. Uh, but our mastery rate in this particular Regents exam was right about on par with them. So I, I think we are, we're fighting our way um, through kids getting this, this last round of work hard and you've got to get through the final exam. Kids were aware. And I will tell you as educators, especially in Caledonia, I don't know what it looks like other places, but here educators are very um, annoyed at the idea that the 50 is there, that it exists, that kids know that it exists. Uh, they'll have kids say things to them like, well, but it doesn't matter, I only have to get the 50. So like, once that goes away, I feel like you just increase that expectation of everybody has to jump this high. And I think we all know that when we set expectations high, kids will reach our expectations. So um, although that passing rate would be a little low without the appeal, we, we will be excited to see that go away. Um, the next one that Dr. we'll Schell, look at, oh, yes. In addition to the 50, was there also exams where after the results were in, they had to apply a curve at the state level? So the state typically does that when they initiate a new exam. So if you look at our exam results, you'll see that this year the state initiated a new exam in U.S. History. Um, but we actually, all of our students in grade 11 took U.S. History in the fall. There was no Regents exam in January. Um, so that actually did happen with the, with the June Regents. So when they give a new Regents exam, they actually draw in all of our, all of our scores, how we graded the kids on their rubrics, their multiple choice. That's when they actually build the curve. Um, I am told from my colleagues that that U.S. History curve was extremely generous, that this new assessment was one that we thought was going to be very challenging. Uh, the state do, does seem to be accepting um, less than what we thought that they would be. So. Uh, social studies teachers are watching the curve. So it's like we're moving into a new set of standards. And so the expectation was that the writing was going to get a lot harder. And when the writing gets a lot harder, what then happens to the rubric that scores the writing? The way the state does this, and I, and I guess it's just a, it's kind of a education around how standardized testing is created. So these are norm referenced assessments. So basically, until we see how kids in the field do, we don't really know how the test played, right? So it's not that they're necessarily playing with the test, but they actually need to see, given this test and its time constraints, if we were to give it to all of you, we've got to draw it back in and see, like, how did, how did we do? Did our rubric make sense? Did it measure the right way? It takes a couple of years for the state to actually kind of get that a little bit better in terms of what the um, student samples look like. So you'll hear parents and um, community members possibly talking about field testing. Like none of us like to field test, but that's why field testing is also so important. Because kids are being compared to kids across the state of New York, and the only way to do that is to get those right examples in. To be able to compare how you wrote if you're in Caledonia Mumford on this response versus how a child in New York City responded or somebody in Brighton. So the kids are really being compared to other kids in the state. So you do watch that when a new assessment comes out. Once an assessment is out and it's pretty standard and we now kind of know what to expect, you do tend to see that the student responses that come from the state get a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger, if that makes sense. So what got a three this year 
probably will get a two, two years from now. It, it will be not as good of writing while, this, while we in, in the field adjust and get our kids writing better. Thank you. Absolutely. So living environment is the other freshman one that we want to take a look at. Um, our living environment scores, our passing rate overall for the year was at 74%. Uh, when we put our students in there, able to the 50 to the 64, we go back up to 97%. So we have two students across the district that did not get through the living environment exam. Uh, again, same is true, freshman class, I like to see those two exams and that course credit get picked up. Kids are either scheduled to retake the course um, or they head to summer school to pick up credit there. Uh, let's see. That is algebra and biology. Now let's go take a look at English 11 together. So overall this year, um, we had nine students fail the English 11 regents. That is definitely uh, not our norm. We like to see 100% passing around here uh, with that one. So the English regents, we were at 84% passing. Once we add the eight kids that qualified for the appeal, we get ourselves back up to 98% passing. We do have one student that we are going to work very hard to get through the English regents. Pass the course, just trying to get that test on the boat. Our mastery rates in English 11 were at 45%. That's another one where uh, I've compared us to a similar school, and I would say our mastery rates with English 11 are running neck and neck with, with the folks where we should be. So that one, and we, when you look at that, you see our mastery rates in earth science were high, our mastery rates in English 11 were high. In the other areas where you might think, oh, geez, that was low, we definitely, are, we're, we're running, we're trending a little lower in science, and I'd like to see us trending. Um, you do know that we've spent a great deal of time and attention and some money this year and in investing in some staff development for our science teachers straight across the board. As the standards are shifting and moving, your science tests are becoming um, more performance-based, where the kids are having to do a lot more critical thinking and data analysis and making sure that what instruction looks like in the classroom matches the expectation of that test is the direction that the, the state is moving and the direction of our staff development. So I'm hoping that we don't see this trend for much longer. Uh, the last one would be typically U.S. history, but we definitely won't have an issue with that exam. Our kids all took it in the fall. So we are currently on track for graduation rates to stay high. Questions? Yeah, but this curve, this courtesy of New York State, by chance, do you know if perhaps that New York and California are the only states in the country? They have such a thing or does it No, happen? most states, we like to say that sometimes in the state of New York, but most states have an end of course assessment. They call it something different. Like here we call them regents exams. And so if you were to say, well, do other do other states have regents exams? The, the answer would be no, but other states have what they then call an end of course assessment. Most states have them. They're actually required by the federal government as part of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. So if you remember, like during COVID, as we were kind of recovering, there were some exams we had to give, some we didn't give, and some we had to give, because the federal government still called in the assessments that are required for accountability for our federal funding. So Maybe I'm not understanding the curve. Was that like when someone has a 59 and the state gives everybody eight and a half points? Yes. Yeah, so there are definitely some tests. So like if you were gonna if you were gonna look at our chemistry regents results, in the chemistry regents, and it's a little complex. I could show you guys at some point, but there's literally a curve chart. And so it will with the kids will, how many multiple choice questions did you get right? You got this many right. How many points did you get on your they call them parts two and three, it's where the kids have to do some um, some writing usually or like solve a, a longer math problem. How many points did you get on those parts? And then we're going to take our fingers until we get to this little dot over here. This is your grade. Your grade is a combination of how you performed in a couple of different portions of the test. If you're looking at a chemistry curve, the chemistry curve has a negative curve. Good luck getting 100. The algebra one curve, you can get, you can pass with a 65 and only have gotten like maybe 28 questions right total on the entire test. So it is definitely. It is fair to say that students should graduate from high school, right? It is fair to say that the assessments should not be prohibiting them from being able to get through it. So when we're looking at the exams I draw our attention to, like algebra and English and US history, those ones are pretty fair. When you start looking at earth science and chemistry and physics and algebra two, the hard, like the harder courses that we offer, the upper level math and science, 
you're going to see that those exams are they're much harder to hit mastery in because they're they're either negative curving or the curve isn't generous at all. You earn every point. Thank you. Of course. Did you want me to speak to discipline data at all? I, I saw it. Go through it, please. The, the one thing that I really just wanted to draw your attention to is that you're now looking at discipline data that combines both the buildings. And we are used to talking about discipline data as middle school and then high school. On average, I would say we were probably, middle school was probably right around 40, 45 discipline referrals a year. The high school on average has always been right around that as well. So you did just look at a data set that put us completely together and you do see that spike in discipline that you've probably been hearing a little bit about, right? So in my compact committees, we talk about this. I think when kids go home and they're talking at the kitchen table, they are sharing with their families like things that maybe they've seen happen at school or heard happened at school. Um, maybe you even have heard teachers say, like it was a bit of a challenging year in terms of discipline. So I did just want to draw your attention to the fact that we did, we did see about 60 more discipline referrals this year than what we typically do. Um, and you will see when you're looking at that discipline data that every discipline referral that comes into the office leaves the office with some sort of consequence. Um, one thing that is new to us this year that I added really intentionally because um, you now have myself and Mr. McCardle working in tandem around discipline. Like if I happen to be in a space and something is occurring, I'm handling it. If he's in a space, he's handling it. And my largest concern coming into this school year would be that I walk past a teacher in the hallway and the teacher says, hey, uh, Becky, this happened in my class. Would you pull so-and-so and just chat with her about about that behavior. Like I've talked to her already a couple times, I would love it if you do that. It's one thing to have a, we call it a principal conversation, right? So I like, I joined the, the conversation around, let's increase this, let's get rid of this behavior, we don't wanna see this, should I call your mom? Like where are we at right now? I don't wanna get us in a pattern where since there's two of us, that we're both having these nice conversations multiple times with kids versus, I've already, I've already talked to you about that, so now you have consequence. So you will see now that in one of the discipline referrals, the teacher can actually write a referral that just requests a principal conversation. Well, so that's that why way, there's so many of them. Yes, and that way you can see, like that's work we've always done. That's work that Mr. Bolter does, that, that Mr. Estabrooks did when we were two buildings, that I've always done. We've never really trailed that, so I also want you to pay attention to that, because that is something that we've always done but I am asking now that it be done in a little bit more of a formal way so we don't lose track of that and end up where kids are getting too, I don't wanna to say too many nice conversations, right? But like at some point that behavior should have a consequence so that we're all on the same page and the phone call is going home. So you're seeing that in this data set as well. So I just wanted to draw your attention to, to those things. I definitely think that that's a shift, Dr. Chanel, right? Yes. Us doing that. And it's more purposeful. Yes. And I've also noticed and heard from other people that in school tool you will see discipline accurately reflected, yes. which hasn't always been there. Yes. So that can be a shock to parents, I think. Yes. I think just in general, like when, I think there's a lot of things, if you, like even this year, if I'm gonna be very, just very transparent, even this year, I know that there are discipline related things that I handled that were, um, even given consequences that, you know, there's a discipline referral in there. I wrote those. I wrote the discipline referral because I touched it. So yep. there, some of these referrals are not even referrals that are coming in from teachers. But like a teacher might tell us something happened or I hear that happened yesterday. What? There was no referral, right? So trying to make sure that we are accurately reflecting what is happening yes. so that we are able to put the right kind of interventions yes. in place, right? So when we, if we're not documenting, we could just walk around here all day saying everything's great. If, we, if we're documenting, we can start to look at where are these disparate referrals coming from. Um, you know, I know that we can tell you from our data analysis, like we have, we have a couple of pockets. We know exactly where they are, which grade levels they're in, sort of the group that we have, how is that trending. And so then coming through this summer and planning with our PPS team, what kind of intervention are we going to put in well, place? Well, that's where it becomes really useful. Absolutely. Right? Like all that hard work and filling out an extra form becomes super yes. useful and meaningful. And I do think, like, in general, in a system, if you don't do that, then I think you increase people's frustrations because they're not seeing solutions to problems that they know that we have. And we're not talking about problems that we know we have because we're not making them visible enough. So I would also say that I'm, I'm encouraging, not that I'm encouraging teachers to write discipline girls, 
But when you write the referral in there asking that we have a principal conversation, yeah. right? You're not, you're not asking that this child is not walking out of our office with a consequence. They're not getting a lunch detention. They're not getting, like the teacher simply said, will you join in the conversation? Mm -hmm. So it's adding to the referral system, but it is also giving us a good data set around what are those things that are happening? What are we calling, you know? Um, and some disrespectful behavior. Like, what, what is that, when we say that, what does that look like in our discipline data? So it's gonna allow us to analyze and build some of those tier one and tier two interventions that we definitely need to see running. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Read both of these fully. Sure. Okay, new business number seven, approval of our best value cooperative bidding purchase. Resolve that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent approve this purchasing plan as listed. Motion please. Yes. And a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. And number eight, approval of Equilis Group Cooperative Purchasing Agreement. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve this purchasing agreement as listed. Motion please. Make it. And a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Executive session. Resolved that the Board of Education adjourn to executive session at 727 p.m. to discuss the employment and employee history of particular persons and matters leading to the appointment. Motion, please. I'll make it. And a second. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. We will be back after a short break. Uh, last item of business, personnel. We have uh, personnel number one, approval of annual stipends for board appointed positions as listed, and number two, appointment of a long-term sub. Can I have a motion for items one and two under personnel? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carried. Adjournment. Resolve that the Board of Education adjourn the meeting of July 11th, 2023 at 9.58 p.m. Motion, please. I'll make, make it. it. And a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That carries. Have a good night.